Thank you so much for joining me on this quick fix video. I hope you don't find yourself in a similar situation, but in case that you do, then let's check out what can be done really quick to buy ourselves some time when it comes to rotting pseudobulbs. And well, in this case, I've already also acquired some mold in my pot of my Oncidium Twinkle Red Fantasy. Rot can happen at any time. It's not just seasonal. It can happen during the hottest months of the year. Certain conditions within an orchid will result in rot. Now, it just so happens I'm in the middle of winter here in southern Spain. Everything is a little bit more damp, more humid, and <laughs> a little colder. And especially when you have a very tight growing orchid with hardly any gaps in between one growth, one pseudobulb to the other, this can happen very, very quickly because also this orchid, for example, requires a lot of water while it is in bloom. Now, the spike issue is a different thing. I won't be addressing that today. I've already addressed that in the Care Collab. What we're going to be focusing on is how to deal with a rotting pseudobulb or bulbs when you cannot repot, not because the orchid is in bloom, but because it's not actively growing any new growths or any new roots. But you can't wait when it comes to situations like these until the orchid is in its active growing phase. So what we need to do is, if possible, all we need to do is just turn the bulb. But now you see it's broken. Now, if there's bacteria in there, and this is not just a desiccating pseudobulb due to age, and this isn't a desiccating pseudobulb due to age because it is soft. If it were just a desiccating pseudobulb due to age, it would be hard. Now that it's broken, we have to be extra careful. We don't want too much of that liquid to ooze out and spread bacteria down into the rest of the orchid. What we're trying to do is fix the problem before we can do a radical cleanup not perpetuate the problem. So the twisting off method on this particular pseudobulb did not work. Let's see if we can just go in and cut it at the base without doing damage to anything else that is healthy. And that worked out pretty well. Sometimes it can be a little bit tougher and sometimes it goes as easy as this. Now you can see all the decay at the bottom. And that is what we're trying to quickly fix before we can address the entire orchid. We have another one in here and another one right here. Oh my goodness, you see? It is green on the top, but it is rotting at the base. So can we just pull it out? I usually try to just, you know, twist them gently before I actually go in for a cut. Sometimes if the rot has already manifested itself enough, there's enough decay in the pot to just loosen it and not have to make a clean cut. And this one seems to be coming off pretty easy and that's what I wanted to achieve with the first one. So you see, we do have rot at the bottom, but at least we could twist it off and it's cleaner in my opinion than a cut, bearing in mind that this pseudobulb did not split or break on me. Let's look at the next one down. This one still looks good and green, but of course this one is a goner. Let's see if we can just twist that without having to cut it. You can tell that I'm not a fan of cuts because sometimes rot can only perpetuate itself in one area. This is not a good example of getting a pseudobulb off. Rot can perpetuate itself in one area and the twist is cleaner and doesn't make a mess like I just did with this one. Now, luckily, it's not seeping unless I squeeze it. So maybe we still have a chance, but you don't want a pseudobulb to break like this because now all the bacteria and all the pathogens that are in here that cause the rot have now oozed into the media. In inorganic growing, I'm not too bothered. The next thing is as well is to go in with the tweezers and remove whatever tissue material is in there that is easily removed without doing further damage. That includes the sheaths of the pseudobulbs and anything that'll come off at this point in time. And I'm gonna be doing that with my 
orchid all throughout, including spent blooms, anything that can add and perpetuate the problem in the pot. But what I want to do now is to get in and try and get rid of this piece that I've left behind. That's only a fragment of it. Let's keep going. There we go. Now we've got it all. Ew, that looks nasty, doesn't it? Oh, and it's super soft, very squishy, and just ick. Now, we do have other issues. But first of all, before we address the other issues, a cleanup where we can have access is paramount. There's no reason to be doing this and then leaving it as is. Wherever we can get something out, if this is not a radical unpotting and cleanup session, we do have to remove every single bit of wet and whatever else could spread the pathogens. So I'm not gonna waste your time watching me do this, but I just want to show you one part and I will be doing this with the entire orchid. And then we can revisit once she's cleaned up. There's no point in spraying anything at this point in time because we are just gonna be spraying on dead tissue anyway. And why waste the product? So a radical clean with all the areas that we can access with our hands or with tweezers at this point is very beneficial. And only then do we go in and spray with hydrogen peroxide to get everything fizzing and sterilized. For the purpose of keeping this video short, I'm just gonna show you what happens. We're just gonna go into this area prematurely in this case, please bear that in mind. I still have a lot of cleaning up to do, but this is what you want to be doing, spraying hydrogen peroxide into the affected area. In addition to that, if you can, if you have, cut off the old spikes. Anything that is dead, compromised, that can perpetuate the problem you wanna get rid of. Old leaves as well, why not? Oncidium twinkles, do that. While we're at it, we're gonna clean. But while the hydrogen peroxide is fizzing away, on one part, we can continue with the cleaning. But you see, as I did this prematurely, I am now removing everything that is fizzing. But at the end of the day, I'm going to have to do it again. And once we actually get into the project, we find ourselves in a situation where we thought we saw something on the surface and more and more becomes uncovered. Here's a desiccated little pseudobulb from very, very early days, and it is wet. Again, it is not a dry pseudobulb, so we need to be very careful with how we remove that. And because it is so tightly, tightly quetched into the crevices here, I'm gonna do my best to give it a good cut at the base, remove it, which I didn't cut that cleanly. So now let's see if we can get in even further into this tiny, tight space. It's always a bit difficult. And keep that in mind and take your time. Something that is a quick fix can be time consuming, but the hydrogen peroxide 3% is the quick fix for the rot. Now, why am I not using cinnamon? Because the crevices are too tight. Personally, I don't have a very, very steady hand now to get cinnamon all in and down there. So I'm gonna rely on my hydrogen peroxide to do the job for me and then when I can address the orchid and clean her up properly on a repot, if I need to address it with cinnamon, that is when I can do that to dry things out even further. Remember, this is a quick fix. If you are not in a position to be able to deal with rot by a full repotting and media cleanup. So for that reason, this little pseudobulb has already come off and we'll address that straight away. No point in having something loose and wobbly in the pot while we're trying to make sure that the orchid will be fine until such a time that we can do it in more detail. Gives us the opportunity to take out even a bit more of the debris. So you see you have a starting point and from there you move in and keep cleaning up and hydrogen peroxide. This will also address any mold spores that I have. So that's a good thing, a two in one factor. This little pseudobulb is also loose. 
and we'll deal with that straight away because it is starting to rot at the base as well. This whole process can be dealt with either straight away and you'll see in a few days maybe a little bit more. So you just have to stay on top of it and keep going. But at least at this point in time, you're not watching everything deteriorate and you're giving your orchid a good chance of survival throughout the time period when you cannot address the problem. So here we have another pseudobulb. It looks to be rotting as well. Let's try the twist method and see how we do. It's a little bit firmer, so that helps us as well. There we go. This is how I like to see a rotting pseudobulb come off in these circumstances when it is just a quick fix. And we'll go in to the area right there also with hydrogen peroxide. Now working with hydrogen peroxide, obviously after a while it turns into water. So I've got water on rotting tissue, but it's gonna take care of the pathogens. And that is what I'm interested in. The orchid will remain in a very, very airy area. Lots of aeration, lots of airflow, so that all these areas can dry out. And as I remove the sheaths bit by bit and the old spikes, that also allows for a little bit more of aeration and the wet sheaths will be off and they won't be adding to the circumstances. See, we have a tiny, tiny little pseudobulb in here. Well, that's already a real goner. So, I'm not saying we're too late, but we're doing it at the right time so that maybe come spring or whenever the orchid starts its active growth, we can get in there and help her out and still save the orchid and not everything is gonna rot and decline at once. Once again, aeration, airflow is important when you're doing this. And you see how difficult it would be to deal with cinnamon in a case like this. You would literally need it to be in like of an, an, a suction air spray kind of cup where you can, you know, with little puffs of air, direct it into the areas that are affected and then need drying out. So hydrogen peroxide for me is the go-to this point in time. Even if the orchid were now not to make it, at least we gave it a go. When the structures are tight like this, it is harder to stop the rot than it would be if the structures were a little bit more separated, obviously. But doing nothing and the orchid would go down very quickly, there would be no cleanup opportunity in spring. So I'm gonna go about my business and we'll revisit this once I've cleaned her up properly. Now I can continue to fuss with this orchid. I've been at it for the past, well, good 30 minutes. I can just keep going and going, but again, a quick fix is to just tide her over until such a time one can clean up properly. But I've created a little bit more air around the base here where the major problem was, and some sheaths and old spikes have come off. Now, what I did do off camera, and I want to point out, is I pierced with my secateurs, a pseudobulb. And that is not ideal. Now with tight spaces like this, it can happen. So I'm not going to be too cross with myself about that, but more hydrogen peroxide in that space should take care of any pathogens trying to get in there. Another thing, even though this was supposed to be a quick fix, well, the method is a quick fix. Doing it is a little bit more laborious, but I came across this issue, which I just wanted to point out to you. Twinkles in different environments can get dried off leaf tips because of humidity, lack thereof, too much sun, sunburn, etc. But this is a different case right here. This leaf tip is wet. And I hope that you can see the difference on camera. There's like a wet patch going down. And if this looks similar, it is not. This is dry. This even has a damp feel to it. Now, in this case, yes, 
absolutely cut the tips off. I don't, as I mentioned, that's aesthetical. I just choose not to. But in this case, I am going to cut that right off because it's wet and I don't, I'm trying to deal with the rot so that I don't lose the orchid and I have something to work with when it comes time to clean her up properly. And throughout the whole process of removing pseudobulbs, while I was working and removing one after the other after the other at the beginning, you didn't see me sterilize my snips. I just went from one to the next to the next because I was dealing with the rotted pseudobulb. But once I started to take care of the sheaths and everything around the orchid off camera, I worked with sterilized snips. And that is important, a little bit of alcohol every time you touch the orchid because we don't want the pathogens to gain hold and then perpetuate the problem. So let me just show you one little thing, if you're still here and interested. Rot is not always an environmental issue. It can start because a pest got in. And these twinkles being so tight in their structures, there's no way I would have been able to see this from where the orchid was. So. We can say environment, too wet, too cold, not enough airflow, but there's also one critter that can get into one pseudobulb and start the rot. And from there on in, everything else will be affected. So keep that in mind. She looks a little bit better. The problem has been addressed for now and I needs to be kept on this from here on in. And if you find yourself in a similar situation, which I hope you don't, but at least if you do, you know what you need to do, but you now need to also continue to be vigilant because it is not a one and done situation. It is possible no matter what you did, the problem will perpetuate and go through the orchid. But at least for now, we've taken care of this problem and hopefully we will get the chance to deal with the orchid when she is in active growth. Meanwhile, I really enjoyed working with her because the fragrance of these blooms, ah, very, very appealing, nice work environment. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, if something wasn't clear because I didn't want to show the entire clean process on camera, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be very, very happy to elaborate. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day. On one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.